What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Thursday <clears throat> in transit edition of Morning Scone, presented by Brock, the Batters Orthopedic Clinic, Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com, Restored Motions, RestoredMotions.com, and Procharge EV, ProchargeEV.com. All right, uh, what a day, a little up and down. So we uh, got word that Kayshawn Booty was not going to play in the bowl game. And no explanation given by LSU, just that he was not going to play in the bowl game. And then a few hours later, Kayshawn Booty reverse course and declared for the draft. Um, so I, I think there's a, a few different sort of tentacles to this story. And um, I know everyone wants to, is going to ask why, you know, why did he change his mind? And um, I, I was told, um, I was told something last night I'm not comfortable sharing because I, I don't know that it's true. Uh, it's single sourced and I wouldn't go with anything that's single sourced unless it came on the record from Kayshawn Booty, which it is not. So, um, and there, and I guess some people say, well, why would you say that? That's such a tease. And I guess in a way it is, but it's more so just to remind you, like, be careful where you get your information. Uh, like, understand that in the internet age, internet era, anybody can turn themselves into a reporter and, or anybody is media. And it, while, and I've told y'all, I've said this so many times, and this is not to disparage anyone or discourage anyone, but cause I, I, I believe anyone, everyone can, um, should produce content if they're comfortable and let, let the audience decide what, what they like. But there's a big difference between producing content that you enjoy and want to consume, you like people's opinions or the way they go about, you know, their show, and trying to be Woodward and Bernstein. Like, breaking news is a very hard thing to do um, because you have to get people to trust you, and then how you handle sensitive information determines whether or not you continue to get sensitive information. And many people don't understand the standard unless if you've, if you've done that for a long time. And the thing that I'll tell you all the time is, and let, and again, like ask yourself, what does that person have to lose if they're wrong? Like that's, that's your litmus test. What does this person have to lose if they're wrong? And a lot of times that'll tell you, you know, about info. So I look, I guess my only point saying that is I know there's a lot of rumors out there about Kayshawn and a lot of stuff flying, a lot of people who put stuff out that have been wrong. So say all that, consider the source. I'm at a red light. So let me see something more as I get back into it. True acts, Jason H, Jesse post, Wendell Norman, Jacob Falcon, Matthew Garner. What's going on? Uh, Shane, big fella, Damon Perkins, river Reese, Benjamin Brooks. I uh, said, how about the men's basketball win last night? I was at the PMAC last night, so I will get into that a little bit as well. Guy Brooks, good morning. Um, so, but but here's what I'll say, what I will say about, about Kayshawn. When something doesn't smell right, generally that's because something's not right. You know what I mean? Um, Kayshawn had decided to return, and then, you know, was that was that bowl practices and then abruptly isn't going to play in the game and then a few hours later is now had a change of heart and is now going to enter the draft like that don't smell right right and and like you know that and I know that and it's very obvious that it doesn't smell right and usually when something doesn't smell right it's because something ain't right so again I've I've heard some rumors, some stuff from people I trust, but I still would never be comfortable putting it out there. And I don't know that the real reason that Kayshawn decided uh, to leave now 
will come out. If it was a mutually agreed upon thing with Brian Kelly or staff, or if it was Kayshawn on his own, or if something else happened, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. But the and listen, I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed. I, I was excited that Kayshawn was coming back. I think, despite the up and down year on the field, uh, he personally showed a lot of growth from you know when he was injured last year against Kentucky kind of disengaged as we all saw just different program different staff Brian Kelly really challenged him early and he responded man guy responded and came back and earned the number seven jersey and he became a father I think that had a way of maturing him a lot Um, I'll tell you that a lot of the so listen everybody puts draft grades out on players right everybody will put you know from draft analyst to you know NFL front offices to agents. Agents will have a draft grade that they'll put on a guy and they'll share with with their their clients, right? When you when a when a guy who declares the draft is is trying to make the decision or when a guy who's trying to make the decision to declare for a draft to come back, you know, they can consult with an agent and a lot of times agents will share that info. Um yeah, you know, I've been told Kayshawn is that that he's got a, a around three grade and a lot of it has to do with you know a lot of the off the field stuff over the past year how much of it is fact or fiction don't know I would love to see him go to the combine and run exceptionally well for the clock and answer a lot of questions and increase his draft stock that would be awesome I would love it for him Um, but I think he's got a pretty steep hill to climb you know to get back into that uh, in that conversation so so there's the Kayshawn piece of it. And, yeah, I'm disappointed because I would have loved to have seen him come back uh, because of what I think that would have meant for, for this offense for another year to have him out there. Um, but without him, you still have a really loaded receiver room. I mean, Malik Neighbors was your number one guy this year, and he's back. You know, Brian Thomas is back. Kyron Lacey is back. Um Chris Hilton will be coming off of injury. Now, you do lose, obviously, now Kayshawn. Jack Besh is transferring to TCU. Um, And then Jure Jenkins is obviously going pro as well. So, you know, you're down three big targets there. But, like we mentioned, you return Malik, you return Brian Thomas. You return Kyron Lacey, Chris Hilton coming off of injury, and then look at the talent that you're bringing in, which is the exciting part. It just means that some of those young guys, Shelton Sampson, Jalen Brown, um, of course you bring in Aaron Anderson via the portal. It just means they have a much better opportunity now immediately than we thought they might. Um, Let's see. All right, red light. Get this red light. We'll say some good mornings to y'all. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Tara Walker, does the sudden change of heart negatively affect draft status? I, I Yes. Yes. All, all the things off the field with Keishon this year affect his draft status. Brian Irwin, how was the atmosphere at the game last night? Not great, Brian. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it was, I think, a, a skeptical crowd that that built an excitement as it got near the end and it felt like they had a chance to win, which they did. Great defensive effort. Devin Kelly, uh, Chris Keller, tired of hearing he broke team rules. Uh, but Chris, he, like, he might have. Um, I mean, he might have. Trey Guy, good morning. How's E-Rock? Hope Crystal worked her magic. Uh, so Erica went yesterday to uh, Restored Motions and Crystal absolutely worked her magic. Um, like Erica came home and was actually moving around. Like she had been debilitated by her, by her back the past since Friday. And, uh, she came home and was immediately like picking up Christmas decorations. And it's, it's incredible. Um, and I told her, I was like, Hey, look, I know you're feeling better. I've been there before, but you've got to like relax because you will slip yourself right back into that pain again. If you don't like take it easy. So kind of had a reminder, Hey, like, relax, calm down a little. Yeah. 
you got pain, I'm telling you, man, if you're living in pain, go book a session with Crystal Poche at Restored Motions. She's phenomenal. Um, let's see. Um, so, yeah, one more, I guess, and, and I'm heading to traction, y'all, so bear with me. And I, I, my training session's at, in 18 minutes, so I still got plenty of time to get to all your questions and stuff like that. I'm, I'm almost to traction, so I've been doing this the past couple times, and I've been since I've been off this week, uh, just getting the show started while I drive, and then we'll do about 10 minutes in the parking lot there before I go in. Um, but yeah, basketball last night. So, so Kayshawn, yes, disappointing. I don't know that we'll ever know the actual full story. I think you'll have a bunch of rumors that abound about it, but I don't know that anybody really speaks on the record about whatever the reason is that he, that he left. Um, Yes, I think it absolutely affects his draft stock. The good news for him is he has an opportunity to go to the combine, answer questions, run well for the clock, maybe convince a team that he's worthy of the the first round projection that he had before the season. I don't know if he, if that will happen. I hope it will for him. We'll all wait and see. Uh, basketball last night beats Arkansas, and I'm gonna tell you, man. Uh, so I I was stunned. Um, LSU is, um, I think you really just have to be a, live in the moment and appreciate that win, man, because this, this is a flawed basketball team, y'all. They really, 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 really struggle to score the basketball. Like it is, they just don't have shooters on this team. And, you know, yesterday, like as a team, for this season, I need to check the updated stats, but they're like 58% from the free throw line. I think last night there were 6 of 12 from the line. I'm not looking at it right now, but like at halftime, they were winning and it, and shot 30% from the floor in the first half. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, they're super flawed. They're super flawed, but... Man, the defensive give a damn, the defensive effort is so impressive, man. Like, because that just shows that you're bought in, right? Like, Arkansas is a team that came in averaging 80 points a game and you held them to 59. You held them 30 below their season average. I mean, that's. Or 20 below. 20 below the season average. Still, that's staggering. I mean, and Eric Musselman is a great college basketball coach. And and it wasn't like that atmosphere just swallowed up Arkansas. I mean, they've been on the floor against against Creighton. I mean, they've been out there against top ten teams this year. They went out to Maui. And uh man, I am so impressed by that win last night. But the one thing that I that I'd say about this LSU team is I, you know, we've, we've seen them play the same game 10 times. And so last night they went into the game 11-1. and one. Nine of their games were against quad four opponents. So we had seen them kind of play the same game. They get a lead, kind of let the other team back in because they can't extend the lead. And then it's, in a, it's a close game late, and they make the plays at the end to win. They make their free throws. They get a steal. They drop an inbound play. Like, and they and a lot of that is coaching. Is your coaching putting you in good situations to have success late game? And the players believing it and executing it. They did it again last night. I mean, they got if you watch the game, they got a little tied up trying to get the ball inbounded against a really good press team and had to burn a couple of timeouts, but finally McMahon drew up the play. They got a little lucky. I mean, Adam Miller turned his back to the ball as as it was being inbounded, but um but um you know, it's a, a different night, a different guy steps up. Yesterday was Trey Hannibal, who was just, like, Arkansas, they, Matt McMahon found the matchup, and Arkansas didn't have a a body to put on Trey Hannibal, who's a physical dude who kept getting to the rim and finishing. So, man, it was, uh, it was, it was fun to see them finish that one, man. Over a top 10 team, yeah, man, that was, that was a nice, that was a really nice win, man. And, you know, we, I think we talked about, the numbers game for this, um, you know, for this team, and how the final seven games of conference play lighten up considerably. 
Uh, and if they could just find a way to scratch out three or four wins here in the first 11, that gives them a chance down the stretch. Uh, well, I didn't think Arkansas was going to be one of them, but you got you got that win at home, and that was that was significant. All right, all right, we're here at traction, so let's do. I've got uh, it's eight forty seven, so I got thirteen minutes till I go work out. So we'll get to y'all here. So basketball Tigers win. That's great to see, and um, Kayshawn is headed to the draft. So let's get to more of your questions. Uh, let's see. Matthew Garner, do you wish Jack would have stayed if Booty declared earlier? We have plenty of depth, but never bad to have experience. Uh, sure, I wish Jack would have stayed. I think Jack's a great LSU Tiger and uh, a local guy that a lot of people were, were really pulling hard for. So I would have loved it if Jack had stayed. But, um, uh, you know, made his decision and, um, you know, it's all good, man. You just wish him well. Larry Francis, Kayshawn had to go. It's a business decision. I, I don't think that's it, man, Larry. Um, I, Larry, I, I really don't think that that's it. And the thing that you're forgetting is Kayshawn, so you say young father with family, yada, yada, um, which that part's true, but Kayshawn was also getting NIL money, which is, I'll tell you, uh, at, at his age, more than enough to pay for diapers and formula, bro. So, um, I, that, that one doesn't hold, that one doesn't hold weight. Um, yeah, that situation didn't change. That situation didn't change from the first time when he decided he was coming back to now that he didn't all of a sudden become a father. Like that's not the, that's not the reason. Kenneth Smither. Good morning. Cody champion. Good morning. Alan Holt. Good morning. Steep hill indeed. Steeper than. A hill in Louisiana. Uh, Kenneth, let's see, neighbors is going to really blow up. Cody, is that F one fifty or Ram? Neither. This is a uh, this is a Volkswagen Atlas. Uh, I have proudly endorsed Volkswagen for more than a decade, and I only drive Volkswagens. Manufactured right here, the good old U S of A. Uh, let me see if I can do this. This may be a little better, so it doesn't shake as much. You know, you have to kind of look at my hand as I scroll. Um, what team ends up with Kayshawn? I don't know. And it's Kayshawn, not Keyshawn, by the way. Uh, but that's my own problem. I think you see most people wouldn't care, but I do. Brian Penton, good morning from South Central Georgia. Todd Harris, think they go for another experienced wide receiver in the portal. Um, maybe, but I think with Aaron Anderson, they've got their deep threat that they needed. And, um, I think they're really excited about the freshman coming in. So I don't think you have to have a, I don't think you have to go get a receiver. I guess is the way I would say it. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, Kayshawn put up good combine numbers. He's going first round. I don't know that that's the truth, Larry, because uh, there are other questions he has to answer. And I'm uh, I'm not just making that up. I'm telling you, that's conversations I've had with with people who make those decisions. That the where he really hurt himself this year wasn't the two touchdown catches. It was all the off the field stuff. Um, Besh and Kayshawn were irrelevant in 2022. Both saw a dip for sure. They both, but they both got passed up. Bo Jack got passed up. Jonathan Martin, Nick Dubasan, good morning, LSU sports fanatic. Neighbors and Thomas greater than Booty and Besh. Um, I think they're comparable. I think I would, yeah. I mean, you could make a case for either. Um, Bo Jackson, I know it's good for content. Feel relieved the Kayshawn saga is over. Um, and they put hashtag Aaron Anderson. I don't think Aaron Anderson plays Kayshawn's role in this offense. Um, he's going to be more of a deep threat, whereas Kayshawn was you know, most um, explosive out of the slot this year. And I don't think it's really about content at all. I think I, you're not better uh, losing a, a guy of that talent. Taz, does Booty have issues with Jaden Daniels? No, I can tell you definitively that's not the issue. I'll, I will tell you definitively that's not it. Look at Scone supporting the panoramic sunroof. Yeah, man. Check it out. Volkswagen Atlas. Panoramic sunroof. I love it. Tons of amenities in this. Uh, hey, Dad. Going to see Crystal today, too. All right. Enjoy that. 
Brian Turner, good for Kayshawn. Hope the best for him. LSU is plenty deep at wide receiver. Our deepest concerns are front seven at corner. Allen, if I were a drafter, uh, I would be very skeptical drafting him anywhere before fourth, fifth round. We'll see. That's why the combine exists, man. It, and I, you know, the the two things that are the most important at the combine. We talked about this for a year: the medical and the interviews. Medical is where they maybe find um, issues that weren't disclosed, and of course the the question, the interview part is what I told y'all last year. Derek Stingley was going to ace. Because Derek was going to go to the combine. He was going to answer all the questions. Because It's similar to this. All y'all had, not all of you, but many people had questions about Derek Stingley's character. Is he a quitter? The opt-out, this. And I'm like, y'all, that ain't it. I'm here to tell you. Derek Stingley's a great dude. And every, he's just not a guy that's very active on social media and doesn't put his business out there. But when he goes to the combine and explains to these teams what's been going on, they're going to be like, oh, okay. And he's going to go in the top of round one, and he went third overall. So I think Kayshawn has the same opportunity. Um, let's see, Vincent. Vince Vincent. Curious to see how Best does at TCU. Didn't have his best year playing tight end against linebackers. No, didn't he have his best year? No, Vince. And, and like, that's a bit of a misnomer because a year ago they did line him up some at tight end, but that's not his position. That wasn't where he was most effective. Um, last year, you know, they played more of um, uh, uh, Mashburn. You know, he, he got a bunch of run last year as well as Cole Taylor. So, um, no, that's – and he'll never be a, a, a tight end. Um it was just a situation where Jack got hurt in fall camp. You had that the shin injury, and you had a new staff coming in that didn't have any any bias. They were evaluating everybody individually, and guys like you know, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas stepped up and made the most of their opportunity. Peter said, Jaden knows Kayshawn Millions. I, that's just stupid. Um, that's just stupid. Um uh, I mean, I, I kind of want to respond, but it's almost like if you respond, it lends any type of credence to something like that, which is just fundamentally stupid. I mean, Jaden Daniels had nothing to do with all the off-the-field stuff that surrounded Kayshawn Booty this year, and that's what that's what is the real question that teams are going to have about Kayshawn. Not if he can run and catch and jump and all that sort of stuff. Um, Peter, basketball team needs shooters. Football teams need throwers. Imagine that. Brian Thomas, Larry Francis, uh, let's see. I wonder if there were issues between Kayshawn and Brian Kelly we didn't know about. Please, please stop. I'm just going to ask you very nicely to please stop. Because you're doing the exact thing that I told you some internet people are, are going to try to do. They're going to hear a whisper, take it as fact, put it out there, and start rumors and things that aren't rooted in any type of reality. So I'm asking you nicely to please don't do that. It's it's the way that I started the show today. For those just joining us, thank you, 223 watching. Only 35 likes, so please take a quick second, smash that like button. But please don't, it's the way I started the show today is exactly that. It's, there are so many, like, and I'll reset it briefly for those of you who, who missed it. But look, there is a, a catch-22 about sort of internet media today, which is I'm fired up that everybody has an opportunity and there are no more gatekeepers uh, because it's a true meritocracy. The people who produce the best content are going to win. And I think that's awesome. The flip side of it is everyone thinks they're freaking Woodward and Bernstein. And the problem is too many people spread stuff like that. I don't want to call you out by name, but uh, and I'll, but even just speculating about issues between Kelly and Kayshawn or this and that. Like, Brian Kelly has, has been nothing but publicly supportive of Kayshawn Booty from the very beginning. Like, please don't do the thing where you speculate, you put stuff out publicly, you you believe any rumor that's out there like it because you end up chasing your tail and you end up like slandering good people and it's just not it's just 
just don't do it, please. Like, thank, thank Kayshawn for the great years that he had here. Wish him well in the draft. And understand that LSU's got a really good um, – got a really good uh, roster coming back, and they're going to be good. Like, this is another one, Derek Chapman. Daniels comes back, Kayshawn's leaves. Coincidence? It has nothing to do with anything. Like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I mean, uh, the guy's been going through bowl practice. Like, y'all are going to set me off again. I swear. Please stop doing the thing where you speculate. Like, st please stop. Like, it's so freaking annoying. You don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Unless if the people involved tell you what's happening and why I made that decision, you're not going to know. So accept the fact that you're not going to know it and move on, man. Like, I get that everybody has a strong desire to know, but what you end up doing is creating these narratives that aren't true. Like, Kayshawn didn't like Jaden. Kayshawn and Brian Kelly had issues, which none of that is true. Derek Chapman, let's see. By Bengal 84, seems like since LSU hired a coach who's changing the culture, preaches accountability, high character, booty struggle. See, that's fucking wrong. Like, don't you realize that he's the guy, he is the poster child for the guy who did adapt. He's the guy who got on board. He's the guy who who got the number seven, and then throughout the season, as he saw his numbers drop, kept his mouth shut and supported his teammates. Go watch other guys score touchdowns, and the first guy to congratulate him is seven. Like, that's the thing that annoys me so much, is you all, too many of you, have have married yourself to this idea that is fundamental, fundamentally inaccurate. And it's, it's annoying, man. <sighs> Whatever. All right, I got a good workout. Dale Broussard, Rombie, what's going on? Uh, sorry, there's a bunch of y'all I've missed. Uh, there's a bunch of comments in there. It's two forty. I I hate to leave. Normally there's two hundred forty four people watching. It's a pretty good indicator people are interested uh, as we do this live. But I got a good workout. I got a nine o'clock here attraction. So anyway, I didn't mean to get all hot and yell, uh, but just again. To to recap, number one, LSU offensively, I, number one, I would love to see Kayshawn Booty come back. He's not going to. Number two, I think LSU is going to be A-OK -okay next year offensively. And number three, please, please, please don't spread lies and misinformation. If you don't know, it's okay to say you don't know. Just say, I don't know. And you may never know. Like, I've heard stories about why Kayshawn decided to declare now and from people that I would deem credible, but it's singular sourced. And I'm not telling you that I'm, I would never go to air with anything. It's singular sourced. So always consider the source of information, find good information, and mostly just like wish Kayshawn well, because he could have done the thing where he just didn't play this year. He could have completely opted out. But he came back, worked hard, got back from an injury, and, you know. Anyway, I got to go work out. Y'all have a great day. See you. Peace.